Hey everybody, Jason Wright with another episode of ThreatWise TV. And today we're talking about yet another advancement in Umbrella. We keep piling on functionality, keep piling on new capabilities. So I brought in my new friend, Niles Pileshek, who's gonna to talk to us a little bit about what we're announcing very soon and be uh, available very shortly, which is IDS and IPS in Umbrella. So Niles, welcome to the show. Thanks for coming. Tell us a little bit about what we are doing and why we needed to, to do this and add this functionality into Umbrella. Well, Jason, thank you so much for having me on your show. So what are we doing on Cisco Umbrella? Yes, Cisco Umbrella uh, is actually releasing uh, uh, cloud delivered IDS and IPS. I'm sure you've heard about the SASE, right? You've heard about SASE where the network and the security uh, teams and solutions are coming together. Um, and so typically you see like a security stack inside of the data center or your branch offices. And yes. that's changing now, right? And so as as the, the perimeter is shifting to the cloud, you want to be, make sure that you are securing that. And so some of the services that you typically see at the, at, at the security stack at the data center or the branch offices is now being um, integrated into the cloud um, and, and you see like multifaceted uh, functions being delivered in the cloud, like your uh, DNS security, your SWG, you think about cloud delivered firewall and what we're about to talk about now is cloud delivered IDS, IPS. And so some of the things I want to make sure that our 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 audience take away from this, this, this discussion is that, yeah, the Cisco cloud delivered IPS, it's, it's homegrown, right? It's built from the ground up. Okay, it's cloud native and it actually leverages some of the microservices architecture. So that's one thing that's really, really beautiful about it. The other thing is the, the, what you mentioned about the Snort, right? Snort is open source software that most people in, in the security uh, arena, uh, arena know about, right? It's open source and it acts as uh, network ideas, IPS, and it just looks for malicious activity and then takes decisions um, based on what you as the admin has com have configured. Sure. And, you know, it's really, you know, to protect against things that you know about, you know, things like your buffer overflows, DDoS attacks, or maybe OS fingerprinting, things of that nature. If you know about it, then Snort Engine um, has a rule set to, to, to protect your environment. So that's the second thing I want to highlight. And then the third thing I want to highlight is the simple fact that uh, Cisco Talos maintains it. So, uh, you know, when you actually, uh, if you're familiar with the Firepower uh, uh, Threat Defense System, you can actually customize those, you know, those rules yourself. And, you know, if, if you have like a homegrown application that requires specific rules, you can do that, right? Um, and it, it's, it's a very serious thing to do, but Cisco Talos makes it really easy for us. If there's an attack emerging threat that's going on, they write the rules, right? And they uh, implement those rules. They're vetted and implement those rules. Right now, we have about, I think, 40,000 plus snort rules that's being in implemented. And if you know about Cisco Talos, you know, there are uh, security research organizations. You know, they do vulnerability research and development, threat response and, and outreach and all of these things. But they essentially write these rules and they implement it into the snort engine. And that's how um, the, the Cisco Cloud delivered. Uh, IDS is basically leveraging those those intelligence to to provide uh, uh, this security. And the last thing that I want to I want my users to get out of this is sim is is it's simple that is super easy to configure. Okay, it's super easy to configure. Just a few clicks, you can uh, from the dashboard, the Cisco Umbrella dashboard, you can begin to realize the value of it. Well, let's not talk about it. Let's see it. I love to get under the hat and show our viewers what these interfaces look like. Show me a demo of how simple it is to, to enable. All right. So here we're looking at the Cisco Umbrella dashboard. Okay. Um, if you're going to configure it, you basically come to the same dashboard. And that's what's really, really powerful is that, you know, you want to have a unified way of configuring your SASE solutions. And, and we have the Cisco Umbrella dashboard. And so you configured, you want to go to your firewall policies. When you click on the firewall policies, immediately to the top right hand corner, you're going to see the IPS settings um, over here. So you can click on there to implement it. Or right here in the middle, there's a little message that says, hey, you actually have the intrusion system. You need to go ahead and configure it. And so you can go ahead and, go ahead and click on configure, and that takes you to this next screen. 
At this screen, uh, basically, you get the opportunity to decide, you know, how, uh, how the, the, the IPS is, is implemented. The first thing you need to do is decide, hey, from the, from the cloud, do I want to put this uh, into IPS mode or do I want to put it into IDS mode? And so if, let's say you decide to put it in protection mode, so you select protection. And then on the bottom here, you see the different ways that you, uh, this different rule sets that you can apply to your uh, IPS system. All right, you can see that you can select connectivity over security. Okay, and that, that is just a, 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 a snort rule set that says, I want to place emphasis on network connectivity availability uh, at the expense of security, um, possible expense of security. And then you've got the second option, which is the balance, you know, where you want to kind of um, strike a, a delicate balance between network connectivity and, 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 and the requirements of security. The third one is the security over connectivity. Super popular because, hey, you know what? I, I, I want to place emphasis on security. You know, I've got users that are, you know, sitting at the branch of one, uh, working from, I don't know, maybe the soccer fields or maybe the, the coffee shop, wherever they are, accessing applications, no matter where they live. I want to make sure that I put emphasis on security. And so you can select that rule set. That's, that's not rule set. And then the final uh, one is the maximum detection. This is uh, 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 where you place emphasis on security above anything. So you may have like some super sensitive uh, application that you want to protect or environment that, is, that, that you want to make sure that it's secure despite you know, what's happening on the network. Um, here is where you will select that. But I am for our demo, just going to select security over connectivity. And when you do that and you click save, just like that, You've enabled uh, IPS IDS for your organization. Just a couple of minutes. Now, once you enable, you have a question? I just said that's fantastic. It looks super simple, super straightforward. I think that even mimics some of the pre-configured uh, rule set settings that we have in the, the Cisco Secure Firewall or Next Gen Firewall capabilities. So uh, any users of those would be familiar with, uh, with those baseline settings and predefined policies for us. So that looks great. Yeah, that's one of the things I, I think it, it really drives value in that, you know, we, we trust that the snort rules, you know, that whatever snort rules update is being uh, uh, put put out or or um, modified or created in that in the snort engine, that's going to be made available to to our users and those that are using the firepower system, it's going to be really easy for them to go ahead and use that. So once you do that, oftentimes you want to see what's happening on your network. So next, I'm going to take you to um, some of the reporting so you can see what's happening. Um, right here, you'll go to reporting. And when you go to reporting, you go to activity search. I'm going to go ahead and select maybe um, the last 30 days here so we can get more activities of um, more visibility into, into what has been happening. Um, so on the top hand corner here, if you click on all requests, what you're going to see is a lot of some of the, the, the cloud delivered solutions we have. Uh, you can see DNS, uh, DNS security logs, you see RL requests, URL requests, and you can, what we're interested in is the bottom one here, which is IDS IPS log. So by just a click, you can now see that all the reportings about your IPS IDS are now displayed. On the left hand side, you see, you know, things that, you know, are detected that will be for the IDS and then would, would have been blocked or blocked based on the, based on, on your, your, your snort rule set that you selected on the left hand side and you can filter based on that. And all you have to do is click on here and filter. I'm not so it looks like per policy that you create from those predefined policies, some rules would be in detection mode and some rules would be in, in prevention mode. Uh, but if you change that uh, from the beginning to detect only, then everything is just detect. Is, did, I, did I summarize that correctly? Exactly, exactly. But as you can see, I had selected security of connectivity. So I'm going to have things that I would have I blocked. And you're going to see some of the actions that, you know what? I knew that this is a known signature. I'm going to go out and block it right away. And then some things that were, you know, select that were um, detected um, on the bottom here, but it's still under the security of a connectivity rule set. And so it's displayed here immediately. 
Um, you can also see here that there's a lot of different information that you get in the reporting. Identity is important. Destination, action that was taken is important. The protocol, the source is important. And then the signature list that you selected is important. So it's displayed here. And then to the right hand side, you see the actual IPS signature. This is really powerful because as you can see, it tells you the actual ID of, of you know, the rule that was triggered, you know, that was blocked or should have been blocked and so on and so forth. Um, and it also tells you it's an exploit kit. Um, something else on the right hand side here, if you go to the dot 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 here and let's say you click on the three dot dot, you can get more details about that particular event. Once you click on there, you can see all this information about that particular event that was recorded, and you can actually click on view details on Snort right from here. And once you click on there, it takes you to, to, to the Snort uh, website and you can get more details around that particular event. Excellent. And then we get into a real common sense, plain ver uh, version of an explanation of what we saw there from that particular rule. Okay. That's yeah, exactly. Because you know, um, if you're if you're talking about IDS, IPS, we have a lot of smart people out there. They want to know what's going on, and so this information gives you like you know you don't have to go look for it, right? It's right there, right from the dashboard. It's, it's put you on there so that you can get the information you need to do whatever you are doing for investigations or whatever. Um, another useful thing I want to share is that you see here the particular identification. We do have uh, an advanced search functionality that will enable you to, to, to basically streamline how you want to view the reports. So if you go here, you can click on advance and you can see a lot of different things you can search by. Uh, I just copied that IPS signature. I can go ahead and drop it here. And now I can immediately click on that and then search on that particular uh, um, event. And then that will be displayed in the dashboard. Now, Let's say I don't want to do that, right? I know here I can search by ID. I can search by the name. I can search by the CV, I, CVE ID. You know, basically, you can if you have that information, you can search by that uh, by, by that data, and um, you can be able to grab that immediately and and have that displayed for you. Another thing I want to highlight here is you can also. Uh, um, search by your list names. And so maybe you can select, you know, security over connectivity, and that will bring you um, to all of the, 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 the events that has been triggered that uh, are based on that list name that you selected from the configuration that you made. So um, Jason, basically that's, that's, that's it for, for, for uh, cloud delivered IPS and IDS. Well, like I said, I love seeing us continue to add functionality. <laughs> This is a next natural evolution from, like I said, the firewall, the URL functionality, DLP that we've just been adding, uh, remote browser isolation, the tenant controls. If you want to check out a, a video that talks about some of those other recent evolutions in Umbrella, be sure to check out our website over at cisco.com slash go slash threatwise. But if you want more information about Umbrella in general and what they can do for you, always cisco.com slash go slash Umbrella. So, Niles, thanks so much for showing this all to us. I appreciate it. And everybody stay safe out there. We'll see you on the next edition of ThreatWise TV.